Hi there, Amy394. So we started to talk about how we can make local variables here inside of Touch Designer, and I wanted to make sure that uh, we had a record of what the mechanics of that look like. Because um, we'll talk a little bit more about why that's important and how we can use that. But for right now, I want to make sure that we have a kind of firm footing on what the mechanics of making that kind of operation happen are. So to get started, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in a text stat. And then I need to write a, a, a quick little script here inside of this text ad. Uh, if you were active, here we go. All right, and I'm going to say me parent. And I'm going to ask to set a variable. And I'm going to uh, give it a name inside of quotation marks. And I'm going give to give it an initial value. Right? So to start here, let's do something, uh, let's practice something that we've already done a little bit, right? So let's try height. I want to set a height, and the height of this particular thing is going to be 720. And while I'm at it, I'm going to make another variable. And this variable I want to call width. And this is... 1280, right? Okay, so this should look familiar. This is similar to what we did when we made a table, right? So I'm going to go ahead and run this script. And now, lo and behold, I've got some variables here that I can begin to use for a couple of different things, right? So for example, I could do something like uh, maybe in a circle, right? here the resolution instead of um, some of these other complicated kinds of ways of references, referencing that we've talked about. I could instead just ask for the variable that's called width. Oops, I need another parenthesis here. And I could ask for the variable called height. Great. So now I can use that command to actually um, simplify part of the process that I've been doing before, right? So that's a different way to accomplish some of the stuff that we've already done. That's great. Uh, I might also want to use uh, my variables for something else. I might want to have more interactive variables. Like let's say that I've got a slider. And inside of my slider, I want this uh, to control something here inside of my network. And rather than just referencing it, oops, excuse me there, the way that we've done before, right? Like let's say that we've got a movie in, movie file in, and we've got a level. And I'm going to control the opacity of this thing with the slider. Great. So we know that one way that we could do that is we could use uh, our referencing methods or our chop exports to do this. In this case, I'm looking for slider one and I want the thing in that called out one and in out one, I want the channel in that called V1. Great. So now this slider controls that thing's opacity. Depending on how complicated my network is, this might become really unwieldy to, to write as an expression. So let's look at another way that we might be able to do that. What if instead I wanted to be able to ask for that with something like me.variable slider1? Right? That's what I want to be able to write. Okay, so how can I do that? The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat that same starting process that we started with before. I'm going to drop in a text at here. Let's set up that variable. Me, parent, set var. I want to make something called slider1. I'm going to give it an initial value of 1. Make sure I've got my print quotation marks there. And once I've written my script, I can go ahead and run it. And now I've got a base with an a actual uh, value inside of it. And in fact, if I come over here to level 1 and I ask for that, me var for variable slider 1, 
I can see that I'm retrieving one already, but I'm not able to control it yet. So how can I make that work? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dive here inside of my variables, and we're going to do just a couple things to make this work. So the first thing I need to notice is I need to notice that both of these are currently set. Um, oops, I don't want them viewer active. I just want to be able to see them. There we go. I can see because these are purple here, this, they've got this kind of purple color, that they're actually set in Tscript. And rather than Tscript, I'm going to go ahead and change those to be Python because I'm going to write my actual expressions in Python for this. The next thing I'm going to do is I need to add another data operator here. And in this case, I'm going to add and evaluate dat because this evaluate dat is going to help us actually look at for something that's changing in real time. This will make more sense here in one second because the next thing we've got to add is a table. Okay. Because I'm going to use my table to set up the rules for how this evaluation dat is working. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it in here, and so far nothing's changed. Whew. Okay, great. So I'm going to make sure that I change my table that here. I'm going to give it some exact dimensions. I would like it to have one row and two columns for right now. And I need to write two little, uh, simple little expressions in here. The first thing I'm going to ask for is me.input input cell. And what that's doing is that here, as this comes over into this evaluate dot, what I'm saying in this first table here, or in this first cell inside of this table, is that this cell, slider 1, in the 0, 0 position, should be the same thing as what's coming into it. So this guy is coming over, boink, and I want it to be whatever came in, right? So this expression is what's uh, happening, being evaluated in this cell right here. Okay, now here's where it becomes a little more interesting because what I would like to be in this second column, right, in the, the zero, 1 position, is I would like this value to correspond to what's happening with this slider. So in order to achieve that, I just have to write the reference for that, right? So we're going to start with, I'll zoom in here a little bit, hopefully we can see the whole thing operator, and I need to know its address, right? So I'm going to say, look at the space above me in the thing called slider1, and in that thing I want out1. Oops. And out of that, I want the thing called v1. Okay. So there I've written in my reference, my little Python reference, that should look very familiar, right? So if I had just a constant in here, we could use this same expression, right? Operator, look above me for slider 1, out 1, And in there, look for the thing called V1. And when I move this slider, it moves this thing. Great. Because of what I've done here, so me input cell, and then this is the thing that I want to evaluate, that then replaces this one. This one is replaced by this expression. Right? So now 1 isn't there anymore, and instead what I have is a reference to this, to this slider. And that moves over here to my evaluate, and then that's in turn dumped into this null, which, is, which are my variables. So now we can see, let's go ahead and get rid of this window here. Now we can see that this slider is controlling the opacity here, and I've uh, got this much simpler way of asking for that variable. And I could put all sorts of things here inside of my variables, right? So let's say, for example, that I add another slider. 
And in, case, in this case, this slider, let's add one more movie in. And we'll make it different. Perhaps this little guy. We'll add a cross. And maybe really what I want to have happen is I'm going to go ahead and move this. I want to be able to blend or crossfade between either of these movies. And then I want to be able to control the opacity of the whole thing, right? All right, so I want this slider to control this cross over here. So again, we could write in the expression that we already know. We could also set up another variable. So I'm going to come, go ahead and I'm going to come in here and um, I'm going to edit this table. I'm going to edit here in a text editor because it's a little bit easier. Slider 2 with an initial value of 1. Oops. There we go. Now I'm going to come down here and we can see right away that since this is the only set of expressions that's in here, what's happening is that this is then repeated for everything inside of this evaluate. So we just have to come in here, we're going to add another row. Oops, there we go. And now I'm just going to go ahead and add my other expression here. Slider 2 out 1. And in that, I'm looking for V1. Great. So now I could come up here. And this, instead of cross, I'm going to say me.var. And I'm going to ask for the variable called slider2. Oops, where are my quotation marks? Slider2. Right? And now I'm able to do my little crossfade action here. And I'm able to do my opacity action here. Right? And I wouldn't ha I don't have to call these slider 1 and slider 2. I could even uh, give these descriptive names. Like I could call this one uh, opacity and this one crossfade. And I need an underscore. I can't have spaces in here. Right? Which means I could come in here and instead of slider 2, I could, you know, call this opacity. Oops. This one should be crossfade. Excuse me. Cross fade. And this one would be opacity. Right? So now I've got a different way of creating variables that are right here inside of my network. And these variables live specific to this particular container. So as many different containers as I have, I can have local variables that are specific to those. And that might seem a little bit confusing right now, but as we start to build more complex things and different things, this will become really useful. Um, in fact, I know one of the things that I've, uh, I've seen lots of you do uh, in some cases, right, is that you might have one LFO that's controlling the animation of five or six different things, right? And rather than exporting to every single one of those or having to write uh, your expression for that for every single one of those, instead we might, uh, let's do something like this. Let's add a null to the end of our LFO just so we have uh, some room here in case we wanted to ever remap this, right, or add some more math in here. And let's go ahead and make another variable. And we'll call this variable LFO, LFO1, because we might want to have more than one, right? So far, this looks pretty similar. I'm going to add another row here. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to look for the operator that's above me. And I want the LFO, or I want null 1. Let's double check. I want this thing called null 1. All right.
And out of there, I want the thing called Chan1. OK. So now I'm able to take this, uh, this action of this LFO, and I'm storing it as a local variable. Which means if I do something like add a circle, and maybe with my circle, what I want to do is I want to animate its movement um, up and down. Let's go ahead and ask for my variable called LFO1. Right? And again, this isn't very complicated yet, so this might be a silly way to do this in this particular example. But as we start to build more complicated systems, how we can use local variables are going to become really important and useful to us. And they don't have to be dynamic, right? They, this, these just happen to be dynamic examples. Um, but we could store any kind of information that we want inside of local variables. And we can also evaluate things here inside them as well. All right, well, that's enough of that for right now. We'll take close, a closer look at how that's useful and uh, why we might want to use that uh, technique later on. So thanks, everybody, and I'll see you in class.